subscribe our channel to get daily entertainment news from America. Jewish Matchmaking Review Proof that if you want a date, you should ask your mom. Nominally, Netflix's new series is about romance within Jewish culture. In practice, it's a lesson in how you need a no-nonsense mother to pick your partner, even if you think you don't. I cannot do justice to the best scene in Jewish matchmaking with only the paltry resource of the written word at my disposal, but as it encapsulates the entire series in one perfect moment, it is incumbent on me to try. Matchmaker Eliza Ben Shalom is talking to her 30-year-old client Ori about the date she sent him on with a gorgeous, vivacious, intelligent, brown-eyed, brunette Israeli Jewish actor who spoke Hebrew. How did it go? Meh, says Ori. She wasn't the gorgeous, vivacious, intelligent, blue-eyed, blonde Israeli Jewish woman who spoke Hebrew that he'd requested, was she? Imagine, if you will, the spirit of all middle-aged mothers gathering in the soul of one, fixing him with a gimlet eye and producing a single sound that speaks for them all. On paper you might represent it as, yuk. In reality, it is a noise that makes even the hitherto impregnably confident Ori shrink visibly before her. And while I cannot begin to describe Elisa's accompanying facial expression, I can say this, it matches the audio. And that, really, is the essence of Jewish matchmaking. Do you remember a few months ago when ITV seemed to be recruiting for an older version of Love Island, involving people who had been round the block a few times and were probably a little less tolerant of BS than the average millennial slash genzer? This is a stepping stone on the way, possibly even a springboard to, that vision. Netflix's new reality is e. Rise is, whatever the religious topspin, basically a matter of getting a mum in to sort everyone's nonsense out. Aliza has been married for 20 years, had five children and got 200 couples to the altar. Her mantras include, if in doubt, go out, and, date em till you hate em, in other words, stop being so picky, give people a chance, and don't be blinded slash put off by mere looks. Ori. There are about a dozen participants in the series and before Aliza opens up her Rolodex of contacts, not literally, but I suspect, actually literally, she sits each one down and takes note of how religiously observant they are, how ready they are to start a family, and so on. Then, I suspect, actually literally, she sets fire to her notes and finds them someone she, with the accumulated wisdom of years, thinks they need and, yeah, whatever, whom they might like, too. Thus Danny, wants someone obsessed with her, who will treat me like the queen I am, and who has eyebrows as good as hers but not better, get set up with men who have perfectly good eyebrows and are nothing like the bad boy narcissist she goes for when left to her own devices. And Harmony, 44 years young, who wants to travel the world, loves sex and passionate younger men but who cries with her mother when she talks about babies, gets divorcee Aaron, who is ready to settle down, like, yesterday, and have a family. Obviously there is also Ori, who gets the face and that noise. There is enough here to keep things definitely Jewish without excluding the wider audience any mainstream series needs to survive. Some particular concepts, such as Shomernegia, not touching in any way for the first few dates to keep clarity about the type of bond you could form with this person, or Tikkun Olam, rep. Airing the world, or trying to do good as you move through life, are explained for a Gentile audience, but much of it is simply like speaking to like. We see Cindy talk about Jewish women finding men wearing tefillin attractive, we hear the shared joke that Jerusalem, not Tel Aviv, is where you go if you're looking to get married and watch as the culture and the traditions of Judaism emerge organically, for the stranger to enjoy absorbing, and for the non-stranger to relax into. There are enough commonalities, albeit mostly of the depressing sort, with other dating shows from whatever culture, Netflix broadcast Indian matchmaking three years ago, age or any other demographic group. People are foolish and inconsistent, loving and careless, worth screaming at in one moment and crying over the next. We don't always want what is best for us. We repeat the patterns imprinted on us before we were old enough to understand them, even long after they start to contradict what our genuine desires are. People who obsess about their eyebrows are always boring. But the main one is that confident, 
independent women are fishing in a very small pool of men secure and mature enough to date and marry them. Truly, fragile masculinity is the thing that unites us all. Well, that and your mother knowing best if you'll only just listen to her. Honestly. The free press is under attack from multiple forces. Media outlets are closing their doors, victims to a broken business model. In much of the world, journalism is morphing into propaganda, as governments dictate what can and can't be printed. In the last year alone, hundreds of reporters have been killed or imprisoned for doing their jobs. The UN reports that 85% of the world's population experienced a decline in press freedom in their country in recent years. This week marks the 30th annual World Press Freedom Day, a day for everyone to reflect on the importance of free expression as fundamental for all other rights. It is also an opportunity to pledge support for independent media, because without a robust and free press, a healthy democracy is impossible. As you're joining us today from Bangladesh, we hope you will consider marking this day by supporting The Guardian. Despite the financial challenges plaguing the media industry, we've decided to keep our journalism paywall free, because we deeply believe everyone has the right to access high-quality, fact-checked reporting. And we maintain our independence thanks to generosity from readers all over the world, who understand that supporting the free press is an investment in an informed and empowered public. Unlike many others, we have no billionaire owner, this helps us maintain the freedom to fearlessly chase the truth and report it with integrity. Your support will allow us to continue to work with trademark determination and passion to bring you journalism that's always free from commercial or political interference. Today we ask you to power Guardian reporting for the years to come, whether with a small sum or a larger one. 